In, 2000, in 2017, Pope Francis said, in Europe, America, Latin America, Africa, and in some countries of Asia, there are genuine forms of ideological colonization taking place. And one of these, I will call it clearly by its name, is the ideology of gender. Today, children, children, are taught in school that everyone can choose his or her sex. Why are they teaching this? Because the books are provided by the persons and institutions that give you money. These forms of ideological colonization are also supported by influential countries, and this is terrible. So Pope Francis uh, alludes to the fact that we are being forced to accept gender ideology. He's not naive about what's going on in the world. Today, most people, including us, are naive. We are naive about gender ideology. A lot of us think, well, I don't believe it, and we think that's enough, and it's not enough. The Pope is right that people will force us to accept it. We are also naive if we think this will not come to our Catholic schools. It will. The only way to protect our children is to listen to and follow Christ and to live in him. Today we hear one of Jesus' most challenging parables. So there are two key uh, people in this parable. There's the manager and the rich man. So the manager works for the rich man and he's wasting the rich, rich man's money. So he gets fired. And it says... Then the manager said to himself, what will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig and I am ashamed to beg. He's very self-aware. He just got fired, lost his job, and he knows his inabilities. And in the same way, there's a lot of pressure on us. We are being pressured by our culture to accept the lie that men can become women and women can become men. Well, what are we going to do? We're not very strong. We're also afraid of offending people. We're afraid of standing out and getting in trouble. So summoning his master, master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? He answered, a hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 50. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. So you see what's happening here, right? So the manager is cheating to survive. So he goes to the people who owe his master uh, money and he gets them to lie about how much they owe. So the point is he's trying to ingratiate himself with them so that in the future they will repay him. Now, Jesus, as we said before, he is not telling us to lie. Why? Because Jesus himself never lied. What is he doing? He's using hyperbole like we talked about last week. He's trying to use exaggeration to focus on an idea. He's trying to focus us on the idea of survival. What are we willing to do to protect our children? He wants us to do the utmost, the maximum to, to protect them. And so Jesus adds, and his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted truly. I love that. You get that? The master just got cheated and he's so impressed. He's like, good job. I'm duly impressed. And Jesus says, for the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. What's the key word here? Just look for the ones that are used the most, shrewd. So we are supposed to be the children of light and Jesus saying, we, the children of light, we are not shrewd, we are dumb. We are foolish, we are naive. But the children of this age are more shrewd Gender activists have a plan, and it's working. So part of their plan is to show people who are genuinely in pain, people who are genuinely struggling with their sexual identity, and they, these activists use their hardship to make us think that trying to change their sex will help them, but it's a false compassion. So Jesus adds, and I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Dis dishonest wealth just means earthly wealth. It just means earthly means. So Jesus is saying, you better use whatever you have at your disposal, what has to be moral means, to protect yourselves. 
I'm going to show you a three-minute video by the Heritage Foundation in which four doctors, they're opposed to gender ideology, they respond to a good question from an audience member. Dr. Cretella, you regularly refer to affirming trans kids as child abuse, even though there are studies showing that when parents affirm their trans kids, virtually all of their mental health disparities completely disappear. And so I'm wondering why, if you all have beliefs that stand in stark contradiction to almost all of the major medical organizations and that reflect a clear prejudice against trans people, why this audience or anyone else who hears you speak or reads your briefs should trust that you actually have the best interests of kids in mind? That's a great question. Thank you. All right. Um, chemical castration, which is what you are doing when you put any biologically normal child on puberty blockers, is treating puberty like a disease, arresting a normal process, which is critical to normal development, bad for kids. Sterilization, not good for kids. Prepping them for what will likely result in the case of girls, double mastectomy at 16. Not how you treat depression or anxiety, and I have plenty of experience treating teenagers with depression, anxiety, even suicidal depression. Indoctrinating preschool kids with the lie that you can be trapped in the wrong body, again, that's disrupting their normal reality testing and cognitive development. Those things are abusive. As to the studies, there are two that I am aware of which claim that affirming your child's gender confusion is good for them. Number one, it assumes that coaching a child into a fixed false belief is mentally healthy. Uh, science doesn't allow you to assume your conclusion. Number two, those studies are extremely small. Number three, those studies are very short term. And number four, the control group of mentally healthy children are the siblings. Most of them were siblings of the trans identifying child. Oh, and there's a number five, the parents were the ones evaluating the mental health of the children. These are, this is not science. I don't think you need to have an MD or a PhD to know that's not science, that's ideology masquerading as science. When we scratch the surface of transgender ideology, as the doctor says, removing children's breasts and genitalia are wrong. You cannot get them back. Stopping the healthy process of puberty is wrong. And she asked the question about how good are these studies? We are constantly told that trying to change one's sex is healthy, but what about the people who regret it? Has anyone heard of the D-Trans Awareness Day? If we are willing to listen to people who try to change their sex, and we are willing to listen, shouldn't we also listen to people who have tried and then have gone back to their biological sex? Last year, CTV had a documentary on transgenderism showing both sides of the argument. One side shows a young girl in real pain who had sex surgery and she now reports being happier. Stories like this are what we hear all the time and it's not new. But what is new, what is unheard of, is the other side of the story. So uncommon that no mainstream news, news station in Canada has anything similar. This side of the story is about the dangers of transitioning, what other countries are doing, and about the regret of some people who have transitioned. Here in the UK, their prescription is now so contentious, a court was asked to intervene, triggering a fierce debate about the treatment of children with gender dysphoria. These drugs seriously harm me in more ways than one, and they have harmed many more, particularly young girls and women. Like Kian, Kira Bell was born biologically female. Her transition to male was made possible at Tavistock in London, which runs the only gender identity clinic for children in the country. At age 16, after what she calls a series of superficial conversations, she was put on puberty blockers, then testosterone. By age 20, she had a man's beard, a man's voice, and a flat chest following a double mastectomy, also called 
top surgery. But the feeling of being a man never came. Kira says she realized her gender dysphoria wasn't the cause of her problems, but a symptom of a history of trauma that was never fully addressed. She says she was sexually abused as a child, felt abandoned by her parents, and struggled with her attraction to girls. She detransitioned back to female and took Tavistock to court. I'm delighted at the judgment of the court today. It was a judgment that will protect vulnerable people. I wish it had been made for me before I embarked on the devastating experiment of puberty blockers. In December 2020, the court said it is highly unlikely and doubtful that a child could understand the risks and weigh the long-term consequences of puberty blockers. They refer to as experimental. As a result, Tavistock stopped all referrals for puberty blockers to children under 16. Today, a major Swedish hospital, highly regarded for its gender care treatment, is no longer giving them to under 16s. Finland has also revised its guidelines, advocating instead for psychological treatment over drugs. In the US, where trans kids are caught in a culture war, at least 20 states are introducing bills making it more difficult for children to transition. But Canadian policies are among the most liberal in the world. Depending on the province, parental consent for blockers isn't always required. My first duty is do no harm. I'm talking about children and young people. Psychiatrist Dr. David Bell is the former president of the British Psychoanalytic Society. He also treated adults at Tavistock for nearly 25 years. In his capacity as a staff representative, he wrote a scathing report after colleagues came to him with concerns. They felt there was a rush to treat children without thorough assessment. And some of them felt that they'd been intimidated and threatened for raising concerns and were told basically to be quiet and were accused of being transphobic. A large number of these kids struggling with being gay or lesbian. And what was happening was that that wasn't engaged with and instead it became recast as uh, transgender. Dr. Bell is alarmed by the exponential rise in children being referred to gender clinics. Over a 10-year period, Tavistock saw an increase of more than 3,000%, and the vast majority were girls seeking gender treatment. In Canada, the numbers have also shot up. Estimates suggest they've gone from under 25 referrals to over 1,000 in just over a decade. 82% of them are girls. The most interesting important thing is no one knows why that is. And it hasn't been interrogated. You think if you are a health service and you notice this phenomenon, you'd say, hey, that's interesting. Why is that? It's about protecting children. The Catholic Diocese of Arlington wrote a document that is both loving and truthful. The first thing it said is when speaking with those who experience gender dysphoria, it is essential to listen and seek to understand their experiences. They need to know they are loved and valued. So none of us is ever alone. None of us is ever abandoned. Even if we struggle with our body and self-image, God's love for us means that he loves our soul and he loves our body. The second thing is, it said, supporting people means we have to be firm in the truth patiently guiding children towards that truth. And that's why we need to protect our children from dangerous ideas pushed on social media and in our public schools. And if you want to support our Catholic school here in protecting our kids, please talk to any of the teachers, any of the staff there, uh, and they will bring your concerns to Mr. Perry. He would love to hear from you. I love it when Jesus gives us courage. I love it when he gives us clarity. And when you follow him as his disciple, you have more courage. And in, on November 20th, in two months, we're going to have our Christ the King challenge. And we're going to ask that discipleship question. Have we made Jesus the center of our lives? The most important question. And next week, we'll go over this prayer card. We used it last year. It has a beautiful prayer where we make Jesus the center of our life. We'll go over that next week. All of us have to be stronger in speaking the truth against what is wrong. And we want to follow Pope Francis on this topic. 
he is not naive. He is truly loving when it comes to this issue. So you might want to try quote him when you talk to other people. He says, let's not play with truths. In books, kids learn that it's possible to change one's sex. This leads to this error. Let us call things by their names. Let's not play with truths. Let's call things by their names.